Thank you for joining us for the Q&A. I would love to welcome to the stage the two cast members of this film, Anta Dio. Alexis Menenti. <laughs> Interpreter Asia Turkey Zaberman. <laughs> and filmmaker Lajli. start with a few questions and then throw it to you, the audience. I know you probably have questions. Um, be sure to raise your hand and I will repeat your question just to make sure everyone in the theater and everyone on stage hears it. So Laj, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Merci beaucoup. After Les Miserables, you return to the suburbs and you draw upon the violence of gentrification and eviction. You talked about this a bit in the introduction, but can you uh, talk a little bit more about what encouraged you to further delve into this subject um, and return to the setting of your first film? Bah, merci déjà, merci d'être là. Je suis, je suis vraiment très ravi de pouvoir présenter mon film. Euh, dans la continuité des, des Misérables, bien sûr, j'ai voulu faire un, un deuxième film qui, qui parle des banlieues, qui parle de différents problématiques dans ces quartiers, notamment le, le problème du logement, les problèmes du, du délogement, les problèmes de l'expropriation, le problème de la gentrification. Pour moi, c'était important d'en parler parce que déjà, d'une, moi, j'ai grandi dans ces quartiers, j'ai grandi dans ces tours qui est le bâtiment 5. Donc, c'est avant tout une histoire qui est, qui, est, qui est plutôt personnelle. Et en plus de ça, on a eu quand même droit à un gros plan de rénovation urbain où la ville a été complètement détruite et reconstruite. Et les propriétaires, parce qu'il faut se dire aussi que les habitants de ces quartiers sont propriétaires, ont été expropriés en touchant des, des, vraiment des, des sommes ridicules. Donc pour moi, c'était important dans, de parler de, de ce sujet-là dans, dans mon second film. So first, thank you. I'm, I'm so, so glad to be able to present my film here. Um, as you said, this is in continuity with my first film, uh, and so I return to, to um, the banlieue and the neighborhoods to speak about the problematics that are, that are dear to me, in this case, the, the question of housing and housing crisis and gentrification and eviction and expropriation. Um, it is a very personal film to me because I grew up um, in the Bâtiment 5, in the uh, housing block that you saw, and uh, we had a renovation plan where the owners, because it's important to note that the people who live there do own their apartments, were expropriated for a very ridiculous sum, um, as is shown in the film. And so um, it was uh, very important to me to, to, to tell this story in my, in my second film. Laj, you've worked with Alexi before. Um, and if you can believe it, this is Anta's debut performance. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about um, what drew you two uh, actors to this role and then what made you find these two performers? Alors, mon casting, bah, Alexis Malenti, avec qui j'avais déjà travaillé dans Les Misérables et avec qui on, on a travaillé ensemble sur différents projets avec le collectif Courtrage Donc, ça va faire plus de 20 ans qu'on se connaît. Et pour moi, ça s'est fait tout naturellement de lui reproposer ce rôle, ce rôle de maire. Et donc, ça a été vraiment un, un bonheur de travailler avec, avec Alexis Malenti. Et en temps, on avait une première expérience ensemble. J'ai 
produit un film et coécrit euh, euh, le jeune imam et c'était son premier rôle, enfin elle avait un second rôle et donc je l'ai casté pour mon film naturellement et voilà ça s'est super bien passé et en tas juste extraordinaire quoi. Merci. So with Alexis Mananti, I'd worked before in The Miserable, uh, but we've known each other for 20 years and worked together on various projects with Courtrage May. So it was very natural for me to cast him again and ask him to play this mayor and, uh, and, uh, and a true happiness to work with him again. And Anta, I got to know through another film called The Young Imam that I had produced and co-written, um, where she, it was her first role where she was playing a secondary character and seeing her in that, I absolutely needed to cast her for the first role here. Alexi and Anta, do you want to say a little bit about the experience of working on this film? Uh, I can try to do it in English. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was, uh, as, as the first experience, it, it was really intimate to work with Lach because he's a friend and uh, so sometimes it can get more conflictual because it's more direct but also it's more fluent and we know each other. Uh, but it was also very difficult after uh, Les Miserables to play something else and to build this character. But for me, it was really, really amazing also to meet Anta, to meet all the team and to, to do this movie. So, hello. Um, I'll try in English too. Um, for me, yeah, it was my first big experience uh, in cinema. And I mean, I could not dream of a better uh, start uh, with Ledge. Um Obviously, yeah, I knew about uh, all the success of Les Miserables. And I really thought that the fact that the first movie had such a big impact would, um, would indeed um, make us have a lot of stress for the second movie. But it was the contrary. It was really smooth. Everything was really calm. And it was a blast. I want to throw it to the audience for any questions. Yes. Thank you. So uh, the question was, Filmmaking can be a very long process, but this film had a lot of energy and momentum in every single scene. So how do you keep that through this process of, of actually producing the film? Après, c'est vrai que c'est un processus qui est très long. On a mis quasiment trois ans à écrire le film. Ça a été un an de tournage. Enfin, voilà, un film c'est toujours long, c'est quatre ans de travail. Et voilà, après moi je garde la foi, avec Les Misérables, c'est vrai qu'il y avait cette énergie qui était là, qui était très forte. Là j'ai voulu euh, arriver avec un film un peu plus posé, un peu plus politique, un peu plus engagé. Et voilà, on a pris le temps de le faire et, et c'était important de, de le faire en tout cas au mieux. It's true that a film is a, is a very long process. Uh, it took about, this one took about three years to write and one year to shoot. So um, the time uh, is long, but I mean, I keep the faith uh, in the project. And with The Miserable, there was a, this kind of very, very strong energy throughout. And here I decided that I would make a film that was somewhat more grounded, more political, and more engaged in this way. Um, yes, white shirt in the back. The question is, um, that by the end of the film, something remains very open and no conclusions are brought. And whether that's because the problem itself seems to be without, uh, seems to be a dead end. Uh, pour moi, c'était intéressant de faire une fin ouverte, un peu comme uh, on a pu le faire avec les, les Misérables. Et quand je dis, pour moi, c'est vraiment un film politique, un film engagé. L'idée, c'était vraiment de se dire à la fin, uh, Voilà, essayons de trouver des solutions ensemble, même s'il y a très très peu d'espoir, même si c'est compliqué, même si le problème il persiste depuis plus de 40 ans. Je pars du principe qu'il faut toujours avoir une toute petite touche d'espoir. 
vraiment à l'image du personnage de, 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 de Abi qui garde espoir, qui va se battre, qui va militer pour défendre ses droits. Et voilà, c'est aussi le message que j'ai envie de, de, de passer, de se dire que oui, c'est compliqué, c'est dur, mais à un moment donné, il faut se battre, il ne faut rien lâcher. Et donc, euh, voilà. Um, so for me, I, I was important to have this open ending, sort of the way that we have one in Les Miserables also, uh, for this political purpose that I've named before, um, and hoping to say that, you know, together we can still find solution despite the hope being very, very slim, and despite these problems persisting, and being in the state in which they are for at least 40 years. Um, but I, I, I care to have this very, even a very slight touch of hope um, in the image of Abby's character, who, who struggles and, and stands for her right. Um, and encouraging that um, um, that hope to exist uh, no matter how small. Just to complete, the idea is also that it's to suscite the debate after the film and also for the politics to engage to find the right solutions. And so, just to complete that answer, it's also that after the film, perhaps a debate can ensue and, and there can be some political thought and perhaps even uh, an official kind of consideration for, for possible um, political solutions. Yes, in front. The question is about the construction of the mayor's character, um, who does start out the film in this kind of uh, as a as a as a political uh, uh, romantic, as he is named in the film, or at least an idealist character, but who very quickly begins to make decisions that are cold and cynical. So it's about how the the character was composed and, and thought. Donc oui, c'est vrai que par rapport à l'évolution du personnage, moi, au début, j'ai voulu vraiment. Euh, il ne faut pas oublier que le personnage, à la base, c'est vraiment un pédiatre qui est parachuté mère, qui n'a même pas été élu. Suite à la mort, ils ont décidé de, de, de le faire passer. C'est ce que ça raconte aujourd'hui nos politiques. Ils débarquent, ils n'ont pas spécialement d'expérience et ils sont obligés de prendre des décisions qui, parfois, nuisent à, à, aux populations. Donc voilà, c'était vraiment de, de raconter l'inexpérience de, de ce personnage qui, 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 qui va devenir mère et qui sera à la tête d'une un, ville, quoi. So yeah, the character, um, as a reminder, begins as a pediatrician who is parachuted into a political role uh, and not voted in even because of the, the mayor's uh, uh, death, um, which in some ways is a figure for so many of the people who are politicians today, if we come from perhaps different backgrounds, but who really lack the experience to have the kind of political um, um, decisionary power that they do have and then end up making these decisions that end up having very nauseous effect on, on, on the towns and constituencies that they preside over. I think we have time for one more question up there in the balcony. Bah, c'est vrai que c'est un film qui parle avant tout d'urbanisme et avec ce tout premier plan, si je dois reprendre le tout premier plan drone, c'était important de, de présenter justement ce, 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 ce quartier avec une, un, un plan aérien justement pour comprendre aussi, pour mieux le situer gé géographiquement. Et vu que c'est un, un film qui parle d'urbanisme, pour moi c'était important de prendre la hauteur et de, et de mieux situer le lieu. Après, il y a aussi un petit clin d'œil qu'on a pu faire au misérable, même s'il n'y a plus le, le personnage de Buzz, mais voilà, c'était surtout pour expliquer euh, ce territoire. The question was about, uh, just in case everybody didn't hear, the drone shots, and even in some of the more lyrical moments, asking what the drone shots meant and why he has a penchant for using them. So because this specific film treats uh, and speaks of urban development, having that aerial shot for me was a way to explicate and situate the territory. Um, of course, it does um, nod to the miserable, and it is may maybe also a, uh, um, an aesthetic choice. But for me, the urban development element is really what called um, for that situation to be brought to the eye from the first. 
Thank you. I think this film will definitely start those conversations. And thank you so much for sharing this film with us. Thank you.